as we transition to the colder, wetter fall and winter months, sinus infections become more common across the United States. And with the coronavirus pandemic and also flu season underway, it's important to know the difference between those very different illnesses. Joining me now to talk more about this is uh, Dr. Paul Schalk from UC San Diego Health. Thanks for joining us, doctor. Thank you for having me. Well, unfortunately, we're living in a time in which every sniffle, every scratchy throat can sort of raise alarm bells about what sort of illness or virus do I have? Could this be the early signs of a COVID-19 infection? And part of the reason I think for that is because some of the symptoms of COVID-19 are so uh, varied and different from person to person. How do we tell the difference between uh, the virus that we are all very concerned about and the other viruses that we've been dealing with for uh, centuries? You're absolutely right. There's so much overlap and at the same time, so much variability from person to person. The uh, classic uh, symptoms that we see uh, during the season, for example, patients that have sinus infections, uh, which is a very common complaint that we see, for example, with us in the clinic, patients will typically have that sort of facial pressure sensation, headaches, overall um, feeling you know, not well. And then another telltale sign, typically, when you have a bacterial infection affecting their upper respiratory symptom is when you have what we call purulent rhinorrhea. So in other words, you know, urine sort of mucus secretions that come out of the nose. Uh, that along, of course, with the classic fever, not feeling well, nasal congestion, those are uh, occasionally, you know, or more commonly rather uh, symptoms that we see for sinus infections. Having said that, like you very well pointed out. So the out, telltale signs... If, I was sorry to interrupt you, doctor, but the telltale yeah. signs for sinus infection, just to remind people, it's that that pressure in your sinuses, that pressure in your face. That's something Correct. that people usually with COVID-19 don't experience. That is absolutely correct. Uh, the, most patients, you know, have a, a sort of a memory of having had the sinus infections before. You know, we call it chronic sinusitis for a reason. It's a problem that people sort of recurrently have. So they will, you know, perhaps be able to tell that that's something that they've experienced before. Um, with uh, Now, COVID how difficult is it? Uh... Go ahead, Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. I was just wanted to make sure we get these some of these questions in before we run out of time. How different sure. is it with children? Because the science have shown that many children have very mild symptoms or co of COVID or are completely asymptomatic. And it Correct. can be difficult. Children don't necessarily get sinus infections, but there may be other things going on there. That's exactly right. With children, it's a much milder presentation. And, you know, other than the classic runny nose, cough, nasal congestion, it might not be more than that. At that point, it will be very difficult to tell. You will have to sort of monitor closely. One thing to look out for, for sure, would be fever. That's the one symptom that with COVID, you see this episodic fever that tends to, of course, go very high and then sort of cycle through the day where you go without fever. And then at night, the fever starts again. That would be something that, or a symptom rather, that would maybe point you to, towards being more worried about COVID-19 versus perhaps a more common respiratory infection. How concerned are you about people avoiding going to the doctor for treatment for a sinus infection, which in most cases would or could require uh, antibiotics if it's a bacterial sinus infection? How worried are you about people just skipping that step and not going to the doctor because they're afraid of getting COVID-19 at the doctor's? You're absolutely right. That is a concern, like with any other medical condition, people not uh, seeking care for the on the other hand, however, if people, you know, at any hint of an uh, symptom of an infection were to go to a doctor and that turned out to be COVID-19, that in and of itself could also be very worrisome. I think with the resource of telemedicine and being able to contact your healthcare provider remotely, you can uh, start at least getting the care that you need figuring things out, perhaps setting up some testing. I think we have some resources that could avoid this problem. And real quickly, because we only have a little bit of time left, are there any telltale signs that really distinguish between symptoms for a flu and symptoms for COVID? Again, very, very similar infections. Uh, the flu, as we know, is a seasonal uh, phenomenon, and it also presents with all the symptoms that you mentioned very, very commonly. Fever can be part of both, but with flu, it tends to be perhaps a, a little bit less common or less acute than you would see with COVID-19. The loss of sense of smell and loss of sense of taste apparently is more commonly uh, presented with COVID-19. That's what we're learning right now. We will have to see how the uh, flu seasonal epidemic presents combined with the pandemic now that we're suffering, unfortunately, through with COVID-19. Okay, bottom line, uh, just practice good hygiene, wear the mask because that can protect you from flu 
and COVID-19 and uh, social distancing, uh, all those right. uh, things that we have to remember about basic hygiene just to protect ourselves this season. Thank you, Dr. Paul Schalk with uh, UC San Diego Health. Thanks for your insight and uh, stay healthy. Thank you very much for inviting me. You too. Take care.